Hi, my name's Chris, and I just can't stop making things. Today, I want to show you how to make six different styles of ram horns using some of the patterns in my Wow, That's a Lot of Horns pattern bundle. And I'll show you two different types of glue you can use as well. And this is my friend, Mannequin Head, who will model all the different horns for you right now. Okay, well, let's make some of those horns. As usual, start by printing out the pattern, making sure it's set to print at actual size. If you're a little bit on the picky side and don't like white spaces between your pages, you can cut that little strip off before you tape them together on your window. Make sure you line up the alignment marks, and make sure when you're taping, the tape is going over the actual pattern pieces. Otherwise, when you start cutting, your pattern's just gonna all fall apart. Before you go too far, measure the print guides to make sure your pattern's printed the right size. So today we're looking at all the ram horns in this bundle. The small triangular ram horn, the small round ram horn, the large round ram horn, and the large triangular ram horn. And a plant. Now you can cut them out, cutting right along the black line with some scissors. When you're done, you should have a plant, some scrap paper, and a bunch of horn patterns. Grab some five to seven millimeter thick EVA foam and start tracing the pattern pieces onto the foam. I'm using my friendly acrylic paint pen here and that's so that any lines I draw won't bleed through my final paint job. Make sure to mark all the alignment marks and then extend them to the inside of the pattern once you're done tracing. Oh, I guess I should mention which horn I'm making first. It's my favorite one, letter C, large round ram horn. Now I'm guessing you'll probably want a pair of horns, so go over the alignment marks with a ballpoint pen on a soft surface, like your foam, flip over the pattern, and use those indentations to make the alignment marks on the other side. Make sure to label them carefully, because it's easy to get them mixed up, and then you'll be mixed up later. Now, if you just want a flat base on your horn, you're done tracing here. However, I've also included cut lines for if you want to make a horn that kind of sweeps back a little bit more. If that's the case, cut along the lines at the base of the horn, and then trace those onto your pattern. You're not going to cut along those until the very end of making your horn, but it's a lot easier to put them on now than later. If you're planning on reusing your pattern, it might be worth taping that piece back on again when you're done. Now grab your super sharp knife and make vertical cuts all the way around each pattern piece following the line. The foam is too thick to properly glue the tip of the horn, so you need to cut a taper on the back side of the foam starting about 4 centimeters from the tip. Taper it down to about 2 or 3 millimeters thick at the very point. Okay, now it's time to start gluing. I'm going to glue this horn with my hot glue gun, and then I'll glue the next one with contact cement so you can see the difference. I only recommend hot glue if you're using an adjustable temperature hot glue gun and low or multi-temperature glue sticks, because you just can't really avoid touching the glue with your fingers, and so then you're going to end up with burnt fingers and a frown. I think it might be hailing outside. I've got to go. Yep, it was. It was hailing. But that's not going to stop us from making our horn, is it? No, sir. Let's do some gluing. So start by turning your glue gun as low as it will go and still have glue come out. Put a little bit of glue at one of the A alignment marks and squeeze the other A against it, holding it tight until the glue cools. You can see I just did a little swipe with my thumb to get rid of the extra glue. That's after the glue is already quite cool, but not totally firm yet. Do it too soon and you'll burn your thumb, do it too late, and it won't really come off. Also good to mention, even when I'm swiping the glue away, I'm still holding pressure against those two sides, holding them together. If there's one mistake people make when gluing with hot glue, it's just not having enough patience to hold the two parts together long enough. The glue's got to be cool by the time you let go. As you can see, I've matched up and glued the next alignment mark, and that leaves us with piece number two having more foam between A and B than piece one. But that's all right, because we can make the foam compress to fit there. A little bit of glue halfway between A and B, a little bit of awkwardly manipulating foam to get everything lined up properly, and then holding until it cools. The old swipe and rub while you're waiting, and then move on to the gaps on either side. Here's a real-time, with no cuts, example of how I glue a section and of how long I hold it together before I let go. So here it is. I'll give you the play-by-play -play here. So right now I'm holding it together with all my strength. Go for the thumb wipe. Try and wipe the thumb off on the other thumb. Doesn't work, so I've still got glue on my one thumb right now. Pressing down on the seam, still holding things together, but that's helping line the two edges up. Thumb on the seam to hold it together while I clean my other thumb and some more squishing and pressing until I'm happy that it's not going to come apart. Now just repeat that process at every other alignment point and between every other alignment point until piece one and piece two are glued together. Yay. 
If there's any spots you missed, you can shoot a bit of glue in there and flip it inwards to squeeze it together. Grab a sheet of scrap foam and rub it vigorously along the seams in order to rub away any stray glue that's on the top surface. The friction just melts it a little bit and smooths it out. Now glue piece 3 to piece 2, starting by lining up the ends. It appears that the bottom edge doesn't line up, but it does once you force it to. The gluing process here is exactly the same as for the last piece, so tack all those alignment marks and work on the spaces in between them. When you're done, you should have something that looks a bit like this. Take a bit of time and curve those edges in so it'll be a little easier to glue the last seam. Of course, there's really nothing easy about gluing the last seam. Those two sides, they just super don't want to go together like you want them to. So, I started with the easiest place to get two points to line up, which happened to be the J alignment markings. I glued those first and then went to each set of alignment marks and tacked them all in place before I even started going in between them. It probably doesn't show very well on the video here, but I am holding those together with all the strength in my hands because it is really awkward to hold them together. So yeah, have fun with that. With all the alignment points tacked, you can now struggle with getting all the rest of it glued together. I ended up using the My How You Grown technique for a good part of it, which involves pinching the edges of the foam with your thumb and forefingers to create a flat spot so you can push the seam together nice and flush. It does get easier as you get closer to the tip, so that's a bit of good news. When you get to the tip, there's no real good way to avoid getting hot glue on your fingers. Basically, I just try to use a very small amount of hot glue and then just keep pinching the tip as the glue cools. A few little touch-ups anywhere that you still have gaps, and some foam scrubbery to clean everything up. If you're happy with that flat bass on your ram horn, or want to use it as a ram horn trumpet thing, then you're all done. If however you want the more swept back vibe, it's time to cut along that line you made at the beginning. You'll notice that as I cut the sides, the knife blade is perpendicular to the foam, but then I keep it at that same angle as I come to the front and the back. So the front and the back are actually cut at a bit of an angle. And there you go, a large round ram horn. Okay, now let's make the small triangular ram horn. And just for something different, I'm going to show you gluing it together with contact cement. Everything's the same as far as tracing goes, but what's different is you're going to tilt your knife to about a 45 degree angle for cutting out all the long edges. That's all the edges except that short flat bottom edge. That one gets cut vertically. And of course, don't forget to do some tip tapering. I always seem to forget that step and have to try and do it after I've started gluing. Now, when using contact cement, apply it to both surfaces, allow it to dry until it's no longer tacky, and then firmly press the two edges together. It's a good idea to smooth it out so it's a nice, even, thin layer, and I like to give it two coats before putting it together. So I'll apply it once, let it dry, apply it again, let it dry, and then finally press the two pieces together. Once those two sides touch each other, you've pretty much got a permanent bond, so you don't really get any second chances. I did figure out later that you can slide a piece of paper in between just ahead of where you're working, and that'll keep those two edges from bonding before you're ready for them. I'll show you that when we get to the large triangular ram horn. Once the seam's all together, go back along it, giving it some extra pressing together action. And now you can go on and do the same thing gluing piece 2 to piece 3. I started gluing it at the tip, just to change things up a bit. And last but not least, we get to glue the final seam together. I found the best way to do this was first to pinch the alignment points together, then even out and line up the very back edge of the two pieces of foam, lightly sticking them together to hold everything in place. Then go back and finish closing up the seam, doing your best to make that outside edge line up as perfectly as possible. Now, if it takes you too long to get your two contact cemented halves together, you'll find that they don't stick. A handy little fix for this is if you heat that section with your heat gun, it'll reactivate the glue and then you can stick it together like it was supposed to be. And there you go, Ram Horn A is finished. It's a triangular small ram horn. But are you really finished with triangular ram horn A? The answer is no, because you can also make a D-shaped ram horn from that pattern. The only difference here is that the front seam doesn't get undercut. And because it's not undercut, it ends up not being triangular. And that's an easy way to change the look of the horn without resorting to using the small round ram horn pattern. The small round ram horn is made exactly like the large round ram horn, with all the edges being cut vertically. The only difference is that there's four pieces instead of three. Need I say more? I don't think so. Now that's a nice looking horn. But there's still one more horn in the ram section of our patterns and that is the large triangular ram horn. 
Of course, you can make either the triangular version or the D-shaped version, depending how you cut it out. By now, I'm pretty sure you've got the idea how to make these horns. The only thing I wanted to show you was how I used a piece of paper when I was gluing with the contact cement to keep things from sticking that I didn't want to stick. It made a huge difference in me keeping my sanity while I was gluing those pieces together without having to be worried about them sticking all over in places I didn't want them to. And that is it for horn making for today. Okay, so now you should know how to make a whole bunch of different types of ram horns. That's exciting. Of course, those ram horns are just a part of the wow, that's a lot of horns pattern pack. There's also antelope, goat, dragon, unicorn, maleficent horns in that bundle. So make sure you check that out. It'll be in the description below or a link coming up here near the end of the video. That'll give you enough horns to keep you making horns until you're tired of making horns. A few thoughts on the process of making these horns after having done it a whole bunch of times is, first of all, this is probably not a beginner project. Not that it's super complicated or anything. It just can be a little tricky holding the seams together, especially that last seam that you glue is not that fun. So good if you have a little bit of experience manipulating things that don't want to do what you want them to do. Also glue wise, I was a bit 50-50 on whether I preferred using the contact cement or the hot glue. The contact cement is great, except for that I found that because a lot of the seams have a lot of pressure trying to pull them apart, I would glue them with the contact cement and then over time the seam would start to pull open a little bit. So that wasn't great. Maybe if I had a different brand of contact cement it would be better, I'm not sure. I did find a bit of a workaround for the D profile horns is that I would do that center seam first and then leave it overnight to completely cure. And then when I did finally bend it around to its final shape, the contact cement stayed how it was supposed to. The hot glue on the other hand makes a nice solid seam once it's fully cooled, but you have to hold it in place until it's fully cooled. And that can be a bit of a pain, especially if it's an awkward seam that really doesn't want to go together and you got to push it together the whole time and it's very uncomfortable. So I actually ended up kind of preferring a hybrid gluing situation where I'd use contact cement on any undercut edges and on the vertical cut edges, I would use hot glue. And that seemed to work pretty good for me, but just figure out what works best for you. Try a few different things and see how you go. Also, I will say that any of the triangular cross-section horns are much easier to put together than any of the round or D-shaped ones. There's just less tension on them. So if you're starting out, I'd say try one of the triangular ones first. They look pretty cool and they're a lot easier to put together. I am planning to make another video on how to texture the horns and how to paint them once I figure out how to do that. So stay tuned for that. And I think that's it. Thanks for watching. See ya.